RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, and Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Most domestic problems start over a trivial matter. Today, Phil learns how much trouble a man can get into by just sitting down. More about that later, but first a word from RCA Victor. This Christmas, the most thoughtful present anyone can give is an RCA Victor television superset. A superset like the Covington, for example. It's the gift that keeps on giving. One that brings into any home a tremendous amount of pleasure and entertainment all year round. The Covington is a richly styled traditional console that will match any room setting. This 17-inch super set has beautifully grained doors and comes in a choice of fine finishes. On its big screen, you'll see the clearest, strongest pictures ever. That's because an extra powerful new circuit system brings you television with picture power and the best reception possible wherever you live. So buy the Covington in time for Christmas. And when you do, ask about a factory service contract. When you buy RCA Victor Television with RCA Factory Service, you get television's greatest combination. Offered by RCA Victor, cornerstone of home entertainment for three generations. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. Phil has spent all morning in a business conference at NBC. It is now one o'clock, and he has just returned home a very tired man. Oh, Alice, these business conferences are murder. All they do is talk, 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 yakety, yakety, yak. I'm so hard, tired of hearing people talk. Well, then just take it easy and relax, dear. I'll tell you what. You sit in your easy chair, and I'll finish reading your book to you. Oh, well, thank you, honey. Just wait till I get comfortable. All right. Ah, there. Go ahead and read. Right. As he quietly tiptoed out of the briar patch, Uncle Wiggily came face to face with Brer <laughs> Fox. Is he a good man or a bad man? A bad man, dear. Golly, then Uncle Wiggily is in a predicament. Well, go on, Alice, read some more. Right. Gee, this is exciting. Right. I can't wait to... I just can't wait to hear... Come back later, Uncle Wiggily's in trouble You could have been dead before you rang that bell Come in Alice, why do you have to... How do you do? I'm sorry to intrude, but I'm your new next door neighbor I just moved in, I thought it'd be nice if we got acquainted Well, my name's Mrs. Stewart I'm all the way from Iowa and this is my first trip to California I love California, don't you? Well, I... Of uh, course you do, how can you help loving it? It's just an ideal climate, especially for raising children. Do you have children? I have four. Two boys and two girls and three cats. Oh, I know we're just going to love it out here. Well, it's nice Where's she plugged in? I, 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 we don't mind. Like <laughs> you know, my husband's a salesman for Finster and Feinschreiber. They're the world's largest manufacturers of blue thread. <laughs> do tell. <laughs> I'll be glad to. You should have seen all of us driving. <laughs> We're driving that small coupe My husband, the children, the cats Two a Persian, one Siamese Oh, I thought Tabby would throw a fit He's usually very playful But the trip was too much for him Oh, Tabby, is he Persian or Siamese? No, Irish Tabby's my husband Oh <laughs> Is he a good mouser? You love Tabby He just gobs of fun He doesn't have a single fault except one He smokes in bed Someday he's going to set fire to something I think I know who he has in mind <laughs> Look, you'll have to excuse us, lady, but we were just reading, Good you see. for you! There's nothing like reading to broaden your mind. Well, only last night, Tabby went to bed early, and I was sitting around scratching George's stomach when... Hold it! <laughs> uh, who's George? One of my cats. <laughs> for a minute, I thought this was going to get entertaining. <laughs> have a lovely home, Mrs. Harris. Well, thank it's you. It's so tastefully furnished. Every piece you have is simply exquisite. You know, if I were you, dearie, I wouldn't change a thing. Not a single thing except that chair. Ugh. 
What's wrong with this chair? It's my easy chair. I picked it out myself. I knew it. Leave it to a man to mess up a room. Men are so stupid. Imagine putting a chair like that in a room like this. It's a disgrace to spoil such beauty with a decrepit-looking object like, like, like... Mr. Harris, why are you walking around Keep me? Keep talking. I'm just looking for the handle. <laughs> Handle. There must be some place they crank you up. <laughs> oh, you sound just like my husband. He's always saying silly things like that, too. Oh, dear, look at the time. I must be going. My husband's taking me to the doctor for my throat. What time is the cutting? <laughs> well, I'll have to be running along. Oh, by the way, if you want to replace that chair, call my decorator, Mr. Conrad. He's excellent. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Phil, what do you think of our new neighbor? Well, I think she has a lot of gall criticizing my chair. After all, Uncle Fred sent it to me, and he has wonderful taste. You remember Uncle Fred? He sells bologna cases at Grand Rapids. He's the one that's married to the girl with the ladder back and the piano legs, but she's so right, cute, and right. I think she's just gnarly. <laughs> hey, Phil, you'd better stop talking like that, or you'll strain your vocal cords. Strain my vocal yes. cords? Heinz should have his pickles as well cured. <laughs> <laughs> Stand back and listen. Called up to tell you that I'm rugged but right A ramblin' and a gamblin' man, I'm free every night I eat a porterhouse steak three times a day for my board More than any guy in this whole town can afford I got a big electric fan to keep me cool when I sleep A mattress stuffed with dollar bills to tickle my feet My motto is meet them and leave them and cheat them and love them and break them in right I just called up to tell you that I'm rugged but right My house was built with pawn shop tickets, red, white, and blue My clothes are made of tiger skins right out of the zoo I got a lot of money in the bank, I made it myself The hearts of all my girlfriends lying right on my shelf The girls all turn and whistle every time I go by But I'm pretty darn particular, I'm telling you why I'm in there wheeling and dealing and really appealing and high as a kite Come on, let's fly together Cause I'm rugged but right I just called up to tell you That I'm rugged but fair you cause me plenty worry, put some gray in my hair. You got the lips that sunk the ships of England, France, and Peru. But I'm just like Napoleon, cause you're my Waterloo. I'd like a 15-minute intermission in your Ford V8. Love to make it longer, but I got a late date. My morals have always been gone with the wind, so let's breeze it tonight. I just called up to tell you that I'm rugged but right. Don't overdo it, cause I really overdo it last night. You know, Phil, I think Mrs. Stewart is right about your easy chair. It looks awful in this room, and I'm gonna get rid of it. Don't you dare. I'm warning you, Alice, you as much as touch that chair, and I'll... I'll... I'll disinherit you. I'll cut you off without a penny. I'll... No, in this family, that don't make sense. <laughs> well, all right, Phil, I'll compromise. I won't get rid of the chair. I'll just have it recovered. But, Alice, I don't want it recovered. I like it the way it is. I... I'll get that. Fine thing. It's the only comfortable chair in the joint. It's my favorite seat. Now she wants to... Hiya, Curly. Oh, hello, Frankie. What's the matter with you? I haven't seen you looking so low since they raised the price of bobby pins to a quarter a card. <laughs> <laughs> if you had my troubles, you'd look low, too. What's the matter? Alice wants to have my seat recovered. <laughs> <laughs> Why 
Why recover it? <laughs> Just wear a longer jacket. Nobody will know. Wait. <laughs> Talking about my easy chair. Oh, oh. Why don't you have them both done at the same time? <laughs> get a discount on it. All right, all right. Get it. <laughs> I'm in no mood for jokes. I'm unhappy with Alice. Well, if you're unhappy with your wife, why don't you tell her? Well, it's not that important. Well, I I'm think just... it is. After all, you're my best friend. I'm not going to have any woman treating you that way. You're the salt of the earth. Hello, Frank. Don't hello me, you old seat recoverer, you. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Go ahead, Curly. Tell her. Tell her what? How much you hate her. How you've suffered through the years living with this shrew, her constant Remley, nagging. Remley, will you cut it out? I'm not finished. <laughs> and another thing, Miss Faye... My name is Mrs. Harris. Not for long. We're getting a divorce in the morning. <laughs> Our lawyers will call on you to arrange the financial settlement. Curly gets half of all your money. Now, wait a minute, Remley. I don't want... Half? <laughs> no, no. Alice, don't pay any attention to Frankie. I don't want a divorce. I just want you to leave my chair the way it is. Oh, but, Phil, it's an eyesore. It's... Well, well I'll leave it to Frankie. Frankie, take a look at Phil's chair. Tell me honestly. Isn't it horrible? On the contrary, I think it's very attractive. I love the way the faded green leather is offset by the brown cigarette burn. <laughs> and the way the horsehair stuffing entwines itself through the chicken wire that holds the third arm on. Oh, wait. <laughs> it gives it a certain air of studied sloppiness. Yeah. You see, Alice, he's crazy about it. Oh, Phil, I'll tell you what. I'll call Mrs. Stewart's decorator and we'll leave it up to him. If he agrees with me, I'll change the chair. If he agrees with you, I'll change the decorator. I'll go call him now and have Wait a minute, him. Alice. That isn't fair. I can see... <laughs> see what's happening, Remley? Being railroaded. Her decorator ain't gonna like it. Maybe hers won't, but yours will. What do you mean, mine? I know a decorator. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll get him over here and he'll say anything we want him to say. Well, who is this guy? Is he a good decorator? Good? He's the one who did my apartment. Oh. <laughs> Somebody did your apartment? <laughs> well, of course. How do you think my furniture got arranged the way it is? I thought your stove exploded. <laughs> Helped a little. <laughs> no, Curly, this guy's a great decorator, and Alice will have respect for what he says. We'll tell him to rave about the chair, and he will. You wait here, I'll call. Okay. This will fix Alice. I'll show her that I well, know. Well, Phil, her. I called Mr. Conrad, and he's coming over. When will he be here? Right after my song. You little pixie. You, you got what are you gonna do? You're so undecided. You say you do, and then you don't. You say you will, and then you won't. So what are you gonna do? First you say you do, then you don't. Then you say you will, and then you won't. You're undecided now, so what are you gonna do? Now you wanna play, and then it's no. And when you say you'll stay, that's when you go. You're undecided now, so what are you gonna do? I've been sitting on a fence And it doesn't make much sense Cause you keep me in suspense And you know it Then you promise to return When you don't I really burn Well I guess I'll never learn And I show it If you got a heart And if you're kind Don't keep us apart Make up your mind You're undecided now So what are you gonna do? It seems that you keep slowly Driving us crazy we can't make head or tail out of you. My mind's gone bad. I feel that everything's hazy. Don't know exactly just what to do. What are you gonna do? First you say you do, and then you don't. And then you say you will, and then you won't. I'm undecided now, so what am I gonna do? So undecided, undecided. 
and then it's no. And when you say you'll stay, that's when you go. I'm undecided now. I don't know just what to do. I've been sitting on a fence, and it doesn't make much sense. Cause you keep us in suspense, and you know it. Then I'll promise to return. When you don't, we really burn. Well, I guess I'll never learn, and I show it. If you got a heart, and if you're kind. Yes? What can I do for you? Uh, how do you do? My name is Conrad. <gasps> oh, I'm so glad you were able to come, Mr. Conrad. Mrs. Stewart told me you're a good decorator. Oh, good, madam. I'm the best. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll just bear that in your little blonde mind at all times, we'll have no trouble. <laughs> now, what is it you want done, please? Well, uh, I want your opinion on something in the living room. Follow me, please. Well, here we are. Now, what I want you to do no, is... No, please, uh, I shall decide for uh, myself what's wrong. Huh? Let me see. Now, I don't Alice, think that uh, move it. who is this? Oh, I didn't see you standing there, Phil. I want you to meet Mr. Conrad, our new decorator. Mr. Conrad, this is my husband. How do you do? I... No, would... quiet, please, and lie down on the floor. You're obstructing my view of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Where was I? Oh, yes. I, I would suggest over here you put... Oh, no. Well, well, what's wrong? That horrible monstrosity in the corner there. What is that broken down object? What do you call it? Ramley. <laughs> a Remley? Oh, I don't know what that is, but I would suggest you cut off the legs and we make a lamp out of it. <laughs> Curly, I got a feeling I'm not going to be happy with this boy. <laughs> Mrs. Harris, if we're going to make a lamp out of this, you're going to have to kill it first. <laughs> Mr. Conrad, there's something wrong with this room, and I want you to tell me what it is. Well, just allow me to look around, and I... <sighs> Mrs. Harris. What? <laughs> Who put that dead horse next to the radio? That's my easy chair. <laughs> and I happen to like it. Well, I don't. Mr. Conrad, he sits in that horrible-looking thing every night, and it spoils the appearance of our living room. It does not. Well, we soon find out. Mr. Harris, would you mind sitting in your uh, uh, chair? <laughs> I'll be glad to. There. How's it look? Oh, Mrs. Harris, I'm afraid you're wrong. I am? Oh, yes, it isn't the chair that spoils the room. It's your husband. <laughs> He's completely out of place with the motif. I suggest you keep the chair and get rid of him. Wait a minute. <laughs> you want my wife to get rid of me? Well, it'd be much cheaper than redoing the whole room. <laughs> Frankly, that chair is impossible. It has no, no style to it. What are you talking about? It's a genuine drunken fife. <laughs> <laughs> I've had this chair a long time, and I think it looks good right where it is. Well, that's only because you're accustomed to it. You see, when you live with something for a long time, you get used to it and you don't see its faults. That seems right, Phil. For example, I've been living with you for 10 years and I love you, but a lot of people can't understand what I see in you. <laughs> An excellent simile, my dear. We could replace him with a Swedish modern. Oh, Phil, why don't you give in? The decorator says the chair isn't right for the room. That's what your decorator says, but I've got a decorator coming over, and let's see what he has to say first. You had the audacity to invite another decorator. <laughs> I'll not tolerate it. Well, he's coming over, and you can't stop him. Perhaps not, but if he so much as steps into this room, I shall spit right into his eye. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this inferior decorator? <laughs> it's Frank Nelson. N Nelson? Oh, I know that charlatan. What did he ever decorate? He did my apartment. What else did he decorate? Joe's bar and grill, the skid row pool room, and a city dump. 
And he did such a good job, you can't tell one from the other. <laughs> Mr. Nelson happens to be of... That must be him now. Come on, Curly, we'll let him in. Now, wait a minute, Remley. Hmm? Did you tell Mr. Nelson what to say? Curly, it's all set. I told him as soon as he gets in the house, he should start raving about your chair. Hello, Mr. Nelson. Ooh, what a lovely chair! <laughs> Where did you get in the house? <laughs> you didn't even see it yet. Oh, impetuous me. <laughs> I do like your enthusiasm, Mr. Nelson. Now, look, this is supposed to be for my wife's benefit, so be sure and do the same thing for her. Oh, Phil. Phil, is that your decorator? Oh, yes, it is. Mr. Nelson, I want you to meet Mrs. Harris. Oh, what a lovely wife! <laughs> you get her. I want to get one just like her. Nelson, please, will you wait to get in the living room? Come on, follow us. Now, look, Mr. Nelson, you see, we want your opinion on something, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, but as soon as you walk into the living room, it'll hit you right in the eye. Here we are. <laughs> By the way, uh, Mr. Nelson, uh, one of your competitors is here. Mr. Nelson, uh, I believe you know Mr. Conrad. Yes. Are you still redoing the La Brea Tar Pits? <laughs> Mr. Nelson, your presence here while I'm on the job is unethical. You are guilty of conduct unbecoming a decorator. And as president of our union, I shall thank you to turn in your fabric swatch book. <laughs> one finger on my swatch book and I'll walk all over your wallpaper samples with my bare shoes. <laughs> you do and I, I'll take your color blending guide. You wouldn't shop. dare. <laughs> now, all right, all right, tell her. Now, look, look, Mr. Nelson, as long as you're here, I want you to give your honest and unbiased opinion on a certain piece of furniture. No, oh, I can't do that. Well, why not? I have to tell you what your husband's paying me to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> What a fib! <laughs> Harris, did you pay Oh, this? honey, will you stop? Look, my guy likes it, your guy doesn't like it, and I think Anybody that it's... Anybody home? I brought the groceries! Oh, not him. Oh, it's Julius. <laughs> Say, Phil, I'll make a deal with you. We'll let Julius decide about the chair. Oh, you picked a good decider. <laughs> he wouldn't like anything that belonged to me if it was made out of his mother. This... <laughs> well, Phil, we won't even tell him it's your chair. Oh, Julius, Julius, come in the living room. Here I am, Miss Faye. What do you want? Well, Julius, we want your opinion on something. Now, tell me honestly, what do you think of that chair? You mean that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, kid, don't get hulky. What do you really think? Well, after the first shock, it don't look bad. You think it's beautiful, don't you? I wouldn't say that, but it looks better than the rest of your crummy furniture. <laughs> Now, uh, young man, this furniture is not crummy. Seedy, perhaps, but not crummy. <laughs> it's neither seedy or crummy. It only looks that way because it's cheap. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> I bought this furniture when I married Alice. I picked it all out myself, and I got some very nice pieces here. Yeah, they are nice pieces. When are you going to put them together? <laughs> Anymore. This, Alice, you're going to stand there and let him knock the furniture that I bought you? Well... What do you mean, well? Well, Phil, it was bought ten years ago, and it's not new anymore. Now, everybody's against me. No, no, I'm not Curly. I'm on your side, It's Tom. about time you started coming in. Where you been? Now, Remley, you don't think there's anything wrong with this stuff, do you? Of course not. There's nothing wrong with this furniture that a good bonfire wouldn't cure. <laughs> You've got a good decorating mind, Mr. Remley. Thank you. Let's burn all this junk and start from scratch. Wait a minute, you ain't burning my furniture. Well, then we'll send it to the Salvation Army. That's where he bought it. Wait. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. I have an excellent idea. Let's, let's, let's redo the living room. It's just the living room. Don't be a pike. Let's redo the whole house. Oh, splendid. I'll decorate it in Italian Renaissance. Are you crazy? This room just screams for Chinese modern. I don't want Chinese modern. He's right, fellas. This Indian would look 
look silly in Chinese mutter. <laughs> I suggest we do it in oily American. We'll put a teepee in that corner, hang the scalps over the fireplace. No, and... no, please. This room is going to be Italian Renaissance. The Chinese mutter. Oily American. Now look, I you don't. Keep out of this, Mac. <laughs> but this is my house, and I have something to say about it. I'll go in the other room and say it. <laughs> Your voice annoys me. I was saying, only American would be perfect for this. Uh, Mr. Harris, stand up against the fireplace. But I don't. Don't want... argue. Stand against the fireplace and rest your chin on the mantel. What are you trying to prove? Look, fellas, just as I thought, a perfect spot for a moose head. <laughs> heads in this room. I like French Provincial. Ha, Rococo. <laughs> well, we can't tell with all this furniture in here. The thing to do is get rid of everything in the house and then we can decide. Yeah, a splendid suggestion. I have my truck outside. Let's start carrying things out. I'll clear the living room. Now, wait a minute, yeah, fellas. Take Hold out of the bed. I'll take care of the dining room. Oh, don't touch my chair. Oh, but fellas, you can't take things out until but we have no furniture. Yeah. We'll order that today. You'll have it in no time. Let's hurry this stuff out. Oh, yes! Guys, honey, what are oh, you? Oh, oh, Alice. What do you want? How long are we going to live in this empty house? <laughs> it's been three days since they took out our furniture, and all we've got left in the whole house is my easy chair and some old echoes. How come them decorators didn't take my chair, too? They refused to touch it without rubber gloves. Oh, <laughs> Alice, this is all your fault. You started the whole thing, and I'm going to oh, tell you... Phil, Phil, please, don't pick on me. It's late, and I'm, I'm awfully tired. Phil, dear, will you do me a favor and move your chair to the bedroom tonight? Nothing doing. I'm using it. You can sleep standing up like you did last night. <laughs> Phil will be back in just a moment. If you're wondering what to give someone for Christmas and trying to think of something different, here's the solution. Give the gift that keeps on giving. An RCA Victor 45 automatic record player. It makes a wonderful Christmas present. One model in particular is perfect for everyone, and that's the Victrola 45 table phonograph. With its own speaker, this phonograph is complete within itself, and you've never heard recorded music brought to you with such true-to-life quality, so free of distortion. What's more, if you buy the economical Victrola 45 table phonograph now, you receive at no extra cost over $6 worth of RCA Victor hit record albums. In fact, over $6 worth of record albums are yours for the purchase price of any RCA Victor instrument that plays 45 records exclusively. So take advantage of this terrific Christmas offer brought to you for a limited time only by RCA Victor. <laughs> Folks, this is Phil again. I hope you've remembered to buy Christmas seals and use them on all of your outgoing Christmas cards and packages. The big reason that tuberculosis is not the menace today that it used to be is due to the funds provided by your purchase of Christmas seals. Don't let TB stage a comeback. Use lots of Christmas seals this year. Thank you, and good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> This program is produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Lois Corbett, Hans Conried, and Frank Nelson. Remember, whether you're buying a television set, a radio, a Victrola phonograph, or records, put your faith in the cornerstone of American home entertainment for three generations. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Next, Theater Guild on the Air stars Tyrone Power on NBC.